summer. What a wonderful and fun time of the year, but also a potentially dangerous one if we're not careful. High heat and humidity can make the beach and the pool a fun place to be because it's really easy to cool off. But they can make working uncomfortable and potentially dangerous if not taken seriously. Beat the heat. Beating the heat is really a factor of one thing, keeping the body temperature consistent. As the air temperature increases, our bodies have to work harder to keep our skin temperature at a normal 91 degrees. Our body's natural response is to sweat, which cools the skin as it evaporates. And the higher the temperature, the more sweat is required. The higher the humidity, the less sweat will evaporate, slowing the cooling process of the body. The other thing that raises our body temperature is physical exertion. Now if you couple physical exertion with high heat and humidity, stress can be put on the body that has adverse effects. Now there are three primary types of heat stress, which include heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and heat stroke. Before we take a closer look at each type, let's look at some of the data that shows how heat affects our team's focus and how it can contribute to injuries. As you can see, injuries rise directly proportional to the temperatures. As the temperature rises, the number of heat-related injuries rises as well. Now that we've seen how the heat can directly affect you or your team members, let's take a closer look at the different types of heat stress. Some signs of heat stress could be considered common during a hard day's work, which makes them extremely dangerous. They need to be monitored and taken very seriously. Heat cramps are painful, brief muscle cramps that occur during exercise or work in a hot environment. Muscles may spasm or jerk involuntarily. Cramping may also be delayed and occur a few hours later. If you or one of your team members is suffering from heat cramps, rehydrate immediately with plenty of water. Heat exhaustion is a little more serious than heat cramps. It's identified by heavy sweating, paleness of the skin, muscle cramps, tiredness or weakness, dizziness, headache or fainting, nausea or vomiting, cool moist skin, fast weak pulse, and fast shallow breathing. If you see a person with any or all of these symptoms, call for a first responder immediately and then help them to a cool place. The first responder will loosen tight clothing, have the victim sip cool water, and monitor for changing conditions. If the symptoms worsen or the team member has high blood pressure or heart problems, they will call 911 immediately. Heat stroke is the most severe heat stress to the body and is a medical emergency. Now let's say you see a team member who's sweating heavily on the job. You may not think anything about it as it is common during a hard day's work. However, later on you see that very same team member who's no longer sweating and they have red, hot, dry skin. These are signs of heat stroke. You must seek help immediately and do not leave the team member alone. If the first responder's assessment is heat stroke, 911 will be called immediately. Other signs may include rapid, strong pulse, throbbing headache, dizziness, nausea, confusion, and unconsciousness. Team members exhibiting these symptoms will be moved to a shady area by the first responder and rapidly cooled using whatever means possible. This may include cool shower water, garden hose, etc. If ice is available, it will be placed under the arms and in the groin area. The team member's temperature will be monitored and this will be continued until it drops to 101 to 102. An important thing to remember is never give a team member suffering heat stroke fluids. Now none of that sounds like summer fun, does it? So let's beat the heat. We said earlier that the key was keeping the body temperature regulated. And sweat is the very best tool our body offers to do that. So what can you do? Yeah, you guessed it. Stay hydrated as the temperature rises. Drink water, drink water, drink water, and when you can't drink any more, drink some more. About a cup every 15 to 20 minutes. And don't wait until your break to try to catch up. Remember, by the time you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated. Water stations are located throughout our home building facilities to make this easier. And aside from drinking water, wear loose-fitting, lightweight clothing to aid the body's cooling process. Avoid caffeine, and especially avoid alcohol, as they will dehydrate your body. Lastly, don't forget our new team members in green bump caps, especially if they start in the middle of the summer. Our bodies gradually adjust to the heat and humidity, but if they're not used to it, you might need to give them a break, 
literally. It's important to ease them into the heat if they're not used to it by starting with about 20% in the heat on the first day, increasing by about 20% each day. When we bring a new person in at the plant, one of the, most, one of the most important things that I want them to understand is, first of all, you know, we want them to be safe. I want them to be safe. I want them to help me keep everybody else around them being safe, all right? I talked to a guy today and I explained to him about the heat in the facility, how it's very hot in the summertime and him being up on the roof, he's roughly going to be 10 degrees, 15 degrees hotter than he would be if he's on the floor. He explained to me that, you know, he's used to working outside and the heat won't be a problem to him. But I did remind him that, you know, we periodically go through the plant and we offer Gatorade and things to the guys. We keep coolers of water up on the scaffolds or in the overhead docks for them to drink and everything like that. You know, because uh, a lot of the people coming in here are not accustomed to doing what we do out here. There's a, you know, a line roll and a structure and a schedule we have to stick to. And, but the most important thing we want to do is to take care of the people here in the plant and send them back home the same way they came in. And it's okay, it's very acceptable if somebody out there feels that they're getting a little hot or whatever, they can come and we'll take them, take them into the lunchroom and get them something to drink and let them sit there and chill for a while until they feel comfortable to go back out in the plant. But uh, heat is going to be a problem. And if it's any indication of what so far this year has been, this July and August, we're, we're going to look at some, some extremely hot temperatures out there. Today we've covered some very basic information on heat stress and its prevention. Remember that although they may appear to be normal, keep an eye out for symptoms that may be signs of a team member suffering from heat stress. More importantly, take the necessary steps to protect yourself during hot summer days. Stay cool by drinking plenty of water and beat the heat.